painting and travel go to Michigan, where Sarah visits the Detroit Institute of Arts, stops by the famous Motown recording studio, and Belle Isle Park. Roger uses oils on canvas to paint the large, iconic Belle Isle Fountain. Here's a bird's eye view of the campground we stayed in last night. Michigan has many pleasant state parks, and this one is just a few miles outside of Detroit. First, a morning walk with Mick around the campground, taking in a few of the natural sights before we venture into the big city. Often we skirt around cities, but this time I very much wanted to spend the day in Detroit before we head further north along the eastern shoreline watching the Great Lakes freighters go by and stopping at lighthouses. I understand there are around a hundred left still in good condition. Each one has its own personality and interesting story. Detroit is the largest city in Michigan. We'll head downtown to the Detroit Institute of Arts and explore the Detroit Art Museum, swing by Motown and visit Belle Isle with its great city view and spectacular fountain, the subject for Roger's next painting. We found an easy place to park, and we really enjoyed walking around this popular spot on a lovely summer afternoon. I have a 20 by 30 inch linen canvas here, and I toned this with some raw sienna just to give it a warm undertone here and it will give me a, a better start just to get rid of that white. I'm using oil paints today, and I have titanium white, ultramarine blue, cerulean blue, and the rest of these are just earth colors. It's a very sort of a limited palette today. I have raw sienna, burnt sienna, burnt umber, yellow ochre. I have Payne's gray, and I have this ice blue. And sometimes it's nice to use these premixed colors that are just deviate a little bit from your normal color. So this is a nice gray, and there's a lot of gray in this painting, so I think this might come in handy. And start out with these few colors here. I wanna make this fountain dark enough because the lightest part of this painting is going to be this water falling down here. I now have this already drawn on here. I think you can probably barely see it, but uh, I want to get this nice and dark, or at least dark enough where this water is going to show up. If this fountain is too light or the sky is too light, that, that water is not gonna, uh, not gonna show. Here we have the, the lion up here. As usual at the first start of these paintings, it's all about blocking in the areas, sort of, just sort of finding my way at first. Payne's gray is a color I seldom use, but in this case, it really saves a lot of time. Now I'll jump down to this area here, which is a bit warmer. This is the, uh, the walkway around the fountain. Now on my palette here, this is a middle tone gray that I'm using. So I can always sort of gauge my values to what my palette is. I like to use this gray palette as opposed to a wooden palette that always gives me a, that warm reddish color of the, the wood. Now this walkway is slightly lighter than the fountain itself. What I'm trying to do here is get my relationships of the colors and values right before I go into any detail at all. Okay, so we have the sky and it's very gray as well. Touch of cerulean blue really almost the color of the fountain, only a bit lighter. It has a bit more color. Now when I put on this sky, I can tell right now that 
I need to make this fountain darker because I think this sky is about the right value. This is one reason I don't like to go into any detail and finish any one thing before I sort of establish all these patterns and areas. Right up here is where that water fountain is, the water spurting up. So I want to keep this area dark enough so that water will show up nicely when I eventually get around to putting that on there. Just want to get these values right. Now the colors can be slightly off and painting can still work, but if the values are off, then it's, the painting just will not work no matter what. So the values, when I say values, it just means the lightness and darkness. Now I think that sets up a little bit better value comparison with the sky and the fountain. Oh, I'm using a lot of that Payne's gray today. Okay, here this goes all the way across. This is the very base of the fountain. Right over here to my right, I have a monitor that has my reference photograph on it. So I can look at that and compare these values and colors. Okay, I'm just going to keep filling this in. Now this warm undertone here does show through somewhat. If I were to use a white canvas, this would look a little bit different. This uh, raw sienna on here just gives this a nice warm feeling. Now I generally work from my darks to my lights, but there's no real dark on here, but there is a real light in here. And that's right up here on the water. Now this fountain is backlit. So the sun is in front of me. The sun is coming from behind the fountain. And right up here, that's the uh, sort of the most opaque part of that water. It's the thickest part of that water. So not so much light is shining through here, but on the edges, a lot of light is shining through. So I'll take my white, just a touch of yellow ochre to warm that. And I'm going to put this light in here. Now the reason I'm putting this in here now is still just to figure out the uh, relationships between all these colors. Normally I would save this for last because uh, these are the accents, but to establish all these values, I want to put this in right now. And of course, I'll refine that later. Load my brush up one more time. I'm using very thick paint on this. And right here on the edge, this is where the water spills over. Just with the edge of my brush, to bring that down on this side, kind of the same thing. I think this relationship now between these lights and the darks is working pretty well. So I'll continue by putting in more sky. Over here to the right, this gets lighter here. I'm not afraid to use paint. I just put that paint on there and lay it on. Painting, especially with oils, if the paint is too thin, the painting will just look weak. So you need enough paint, on a, especially on an oil painting. Acrylics, not so much, but or else it just will look like it's there's no conviction to it. And up here, I want to vary these values just slightly. And especially around here, I want this to be dark right in here. Because I want that water to show up nicely. So dark against light is what's going to make that show up. So I want to be sure that's dark enough. So I keep adjusting these values, colors. Every time I put down a stroke, I'm adjusting them. Now I could have used acrylics on this painting, and I do that very often. But here uh, on this particular painting, we have a lot of these clouds. So oils are going to work very nicely with this particular piece because I can keep blending these clouds here to get the effect I want. With acrylics, they would dry so fast that I wouldn't be able to uh, have any time to blend these. In just a matter of minutes, they would be dry. So uh, this is actually going to take days and days to dry. <laughs> so I can work on this 
for a long time without having to uh, remix colors. Down here towards the bottom, I want to start to lighten this. I'm trying to put this paint down in a sort of a bold manner and not blend it so I lose the effect of this uh, painterly look here. I just don't want to blend it to death, you know. <laughs> Take some of this warmer color and add a few more, a few warm patches up here in the sky. This has a nice composition to it because it has so many strong horizontals here and then it's broken up with this strong vertical. Let me finish filling in this little area here and load that brush up one more time. Get a lot of paint on the brush and put in a few more smaller clouds here. Now, even though this paint is pretty thick, I can see a little bit of that raw sienna color coming through underneath here. Gives it a little bit of a warm look. It's very beneficial to tone the canvas with the, with the color that uh, really helps out during the painting process. I'll wash my brush. Okay, now there's some trees back here. And I don't have any green on my palette, but I have blue and I have yellow ochre. And they're so dark anyway that I really don't want to get any color in there. So I'll just put these dark trees in here. That's really one of the darkest areas of the entire painting. And there's no detail in that area back there because it's in the distance and just sort of a flat, broad area. Oh, right over here to the right, we have two figures. Now, again, these are backlit, so they're in silhouette. So I'm going to keep them very dark. Still using this large brush, just sort of blocking these in. And we have a lady here. Looks like she has a camera or something here. <laughs> a lot of people taking pictures. I can really use a lot of the color that I have on here already just to we're going to pick that up and move it around. I load my brush up and I'll just drag that straight across. You know what I can do on something like this? I can take my ruler and I can just drag this straight across. That way I'll be sure and get a nice straight line through there. Pretty soon we'll begin on the detail, but I want to get all these areas covered because I don't want any of this underpainting showing at least not showing through to this degree. All right, I'll finish covering the uh, walk area down here. It's a warmer color. Just finish blocking this in. I can take a little bit of mineral spirits, thin that slightly, spread it around quicker. And again, I'll take my ruler and just use that. I'm using my finger down here on the bottom of the easel to drag this across in a straight line. Well, this really finishes the blocking in process. So from here on out, it's just a matter of refining what I have, refining the clouds, the fountain, the people, and so on, and putting in those accents. And I'll take this warmer color with my yellow ochre and white, and I will thin this slightly with some mineral spirits. And I'll start by putting in these accents right around the top of the fountain. And I'm using this yardstick here to steady my hand. Now as I put that on there, this is so wet, I'm not getting that nice warm color that I want. It's mixing with this uh, darker color underneath, this cooler color. Now some areas of this fountain are slightly darker, so I'll take my Payne's Gray, maybe a bit of burnt sienna to warm that up right underneath here. Now I can mix this quite a bit darker than I'm going to end up with because as I put this paint on here, it's going to mix with the paint already on there and it will make it lighter. So I'm just going to suggest a lot of these little areas in here. There's a figure, I think, it's right here. It's hard to tell what it is exactly. Right over there, it's being covered mostly by the water. Now I'm going to work on this water right up at the top here. I'll just fill in some of these areas here that show just a little bit too much raw sienna. 
This is really the most important part of the painting right here. With my pure titanium white, maybe just a touch of yellow ochre. That's being lit by the sun, so it's a little warmer. Got a lot of paint on that end of that brush. And just with a very light touch, just drag this down. Now the nice thing about loading this brush up is it's going to give me some nice texture right here. If I don't blend it at just a light touch, you see how thick that paint is? Now this is gonna take a long time to dry. Okay, I'll just keep pulling this down. See this texture that's left in here just by this very light touch of the brush. The same thing right here. There's some sunlight shining through this water since it's backlit. Cascades down. And I see a little rim lighting right on the side of this lion. Just to show a little bit of sunlight coming over there. Well, this paint is so thick, it's really hard to work on it anymore. So I'm going to put this aside and let it dry for at least a few days. So in the meantime, let's go back and join Sarah. You can see the Detroit skyline from Belle Isle Park, the country's largest city island park. And there are lots of things to do here on the 900 acre island. But this marble fountain built in 1925 was the main attraction for us. I walked around several times with Mick and watched as the picture takers found just the right spot for their special photograph, including newlyweds arriving in not a motorhome, but a Rolls Royce climbing the steps for their wedding album shots and the beginning of their journey. Downtown is next. This building is about 90 years old and etched over the entrance are the words dedicated by the people of Detroit to the knowledge and enjoyment of art. Those words alone make me like this city. I'm standing inside the Detroit Institute of Arts, and Kenneth is a volunteer here. Tell me about this fabulous museum. Yeah, thank you for being here. Uh, the Detroit Institute of Arts at this location opened in the year 1927. You are standing in Rivera Court uh, that was painted by the artist Diego Rivera starting in 1932, and he finished in 1933. Uh, each of the walls, there are four walls representing north, south, east, and west, represent a different industry uh, that was part of Detroit or the Michigan area. Um, through the years, uh, the museum has certainly expanded. Uh, you're st we're standing really in the core of the museum, that's the center of the museum. Uh, we own approximately uh, 60 to 65,000 works of art, uh, and on display there are approximately 5,500 works of art. After studying the murals, we immersed ourselves in the classics and marveled at the quality and quantity of the paintings in magnificent frames sculptures and antiques displayed in elegant rooms. There's so much to be learned here, I could easily spend a month visiting the museum every day. Very inspiring. Now it's time to hit Motown. The history marker states that the Motown sound was created on this site from 1959 to 1972, starting with an $800 loan from the Savings Club of the Bertha and Barry Gordy Senior Family. The name Motown was coined to reflect Detroit's car building industry, so Motor City becomes Motown. We didn't plan ahead and tickets were sold out for the studio tour, but I was pretty satisfied just walking up the same stairs that so many of the incredible singers and other famous musicians have stood on. And it was fun to feel the excitement and the happy vibes from all the people visiting Hitsville, USA. Well, this painting is totally dry now, so I'm going to put some finishing touches on it, and I believe I'll start with the water. I'm going to take my pure white and thin it with some mineral spirits and just make these edges softer. So what I'm doing here is just putting a wash over this already dry paint. And I'll just scrub that in just 
to make that soft. Now, even though in the photograph, I can't see water coming down here or here, it obviously is. So I'm going to add some of that water look coming right down the edge of this fountain. And I didn't put that in earlier because I, this was wet and I didn't want all these areas to blend in with the background. But now that this is dry, I can easily do that. A little more paint, not too much paint on my brush here. And I'll do the same right here with this part of the fountain. A little bit of paint on my brush, kind of a dry brush again. And just drag that down. I'm using the edge of my brush instead of pointing it straight on. I'm using it on the edge just to drag down a look of water as it uh, cascades over that fountain. And on the edge here, this is where the sunlight's hitting it. I want a little bit more paint and I'll just scrub that around. It was real important for me to get these areas dark in order for this water to show up. If these values had been much lighter, this water wouldn't have shown up very well. I'm going to take a smaller brush and add some of these accents and highlights. Again, I'll use my pure white, maybe just a touch of yellow ochre to give that a warm look. And I want to give it a warm look because it's, it's being lit by the sun. And I'll take my ruler here and just run my finger right across the base of my easel, touch my brush to the top, and that way I can make a nice straight line. And my brush is kind of loaded up, but it's thin enough where the paint flows off the brush. All right, now with some darker areas, I'll take my Payne's Gray, maybe a touch of uh, ultramarine blue. Right under each one of these ledges, it sort of curves under. So I'll put a darker, darker area right under that. Just trying to give it a little bit of form. Now, I would have liked to have done this on the first stage of my painting, but all this paint was just simply too wet. And if I had done this, it would have blended in with the uh, already wet colors. All right, one more line right down here where the fountain hits the sidewalk area. Let me move over to these people here and I'll add a touch of color to them. So with my cerulean blue, I think I'll add a, uh, maybe a blue shirt to this person here. And I'm just sort of using some thin paint and scumbling that blue right over that dark area. So I don't want that to stand out very much. And then maybe some darker blue on this man's pants here. And with some raw sienna, just a hint of color right there in the face and hands. Now I did put several other colors out here on my palette to finish this painting. And those are some warm colors, which I did not have to begin with. So I put some reds and yellows and uh, purples out here. Grab my purple and let's make this shirt right here. And this is barely, barely noticeable as a color on here, but it does add maybe just enough. If I were to add some white to that, it would show up more. So maybe a little accent or highlight right on the edge of his sleeve. And so now let's uh, continue and I'll put some of the vertical accents on here. And this is in a lot of small sections. So I'll just strike those in with my finger on my ruler and the brush touching the edge of the ruler and I just slide my ruler down with the brush on the edge. That gives me a nice straight line and it works very quickly too. Just a real light touch and that brush is just barely touching the surface of the canvas. See how quick that is? Just uh, keep moving that over. 
Now what we have left here is this uh, walking area around the fountain. And that's a real complex looking set of uh, bricks and things. So I'm only going to suggest some of those. If I were to try and put all of them in, it would simply be too much. And this will give me an opportunity to get another area of uh, values and patterns going here because this is really one big flat area now. And if I break this up with some highlights, which uh, could be water, it just could be reflection from the sky, anything, just to break up this pattern, I'm going to just touch in a few areas of color. Just a hint here and there. I need a hard line right under this just to differentiate that fountain from this walkway. So I'm going to make this line slightly darker in here. So I'll just drag that line across there one more time. Well, I think to finish this painting, I'm going to add a dog in here. I'll mix some warm colors. So I'll just place this dog in here with one solid color to start with. I'll just put a bit of edge lighting right on the edge of the dog and a touch of dark area right down here on his legs. Oh, animals always add a nice touch to a painting. So I think that will finish this painting from Belle Isle Park. For more information about painting and travel with Roger and Sarah Bansimer, visit paintingandtravel.com.